Come, see for yourself. The next day, John was back at his post with two disciples who were watching. He looked up, saw Jesus walking nearby, and said, Here he is, God's Passover lamb. The two disciples heard him and went after Jesus. Jesus looked over his shoulder and said to them, What are you after? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He replied, Come along and see for yourself. They came, saw where he was living, and ended up staying with him for the day. It was late afternoon when this happened. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John's witness and followed Jesus. The first thing he did after finding where Jesus lived was find his own brother, Simon, telling him, we found the Messiah, that is, Christ. He immediately led him to Jesus. Jesus took one look up and said, You're John's son, Simon? From now on, your name is Cephas, or Peter, which means rock. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. When he got there, he ran across Philip and said, Come, follow me. Philip's hometown was Bethsaida, the same as Andrew and Peter. Philip went and found Nathanael and told him, We found the one Moses wrote of in the law, the one preached by the prophets. It's Jesus, Joseph's son, the one from Nazareth. Nathanael said, Nazareth? You've got to be kidding. But Philip said, Come, see for yourself. When Jesus saw him coming, he said, There's a real Israelite, not a false bone in his body. Nathanael said, Where did you get that idea? You don't know me. Jesus answered, One day, long before Philip called you here, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, the King of Israel. Jesus said, You've become a believer simply because I say I saw you one day sitting under the fig tree? You haven't seen anything yet. Before this is over, you're going to see heaven open and God's angels descending to the Son of Man and ascending again. Mr. Walker? I am extraordinarily busy, sir. Uh, I just wanted to ask about the chocolate. Uh, the lifetime supply of chocolate for Charlie. Well, when does he get it? He doesn't. Why not? Because he broke the rules. What rules? We didn't see any rules, did we, Charlie? Wrong, sir. Wrong. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You bumped into the ceiling, which now has to be washed and sterilized, so you get... Nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! You're a crook. You're a cheat and a swindler. That's what you are. How can you do a thing like this? Build up a little boy's hopes and then smash all his dreams to pieces. You're an inhuman monster! I said good day! Come on, Charlie. Let's get out of here. Get even with him if it's the last thing I ever do. Slugworth wants a gobstopper, and he'll get one. Mr. Wonka? Shines a good deed in a weary world. Charlie! My boy. You won! You did it! You did it! I knew you would! I just knew you would! Oh, Charlie, forgive me for putting you through this. Please forgive me. Come in, Mr. Wilkinson. Charlie, meet Mr. Wilkinson. Pleasure. Slugworth! No, no, that's not Slugworth. He works for me. Are you? I had to test you, Charlie, and you passed the test. You won! Calling. Mission. Forte.
speciality field what is your speciality what is it you've been called to do everyone has one if the kingdom of god uh, is a jigsaw if we look at the kingdom of god as a jigsaw we each have our own unique shape that fits into the big picture when they all come together the picture is much easier to see isn't it one piece is missing jigsaw does, the jigsaw doesn't look complete does it charlie bucket in the clip you've just seen is the ultimate rags to riches story isn't it charlie's destiny is to take over the chocolate factory that he adores if you know the story uh willy wonka hides five golden tickets in chocolate bars and sends them out all over the world and one by one kids from around the world they find them until there's only one left so four are found it's one left and which charlie finds in a bar bought with his very last dollar charlie bucket's calling is to run a chocolate factory that's what he's called to do in the story that's his destiny in the passage today we are introduced to peter for the first time so john the writer of the book john the first we would call him in our little uh, series of 10 at 10 on tuesday john the first who's the writer the apostle he says that he's building up a case for all the witnesses for jesus so he looks at the world and creation he looks at john the baptist he looks at the pharisees and now he turns his attention to the disciples what did the disciples the witnesses to jesus the actual friends the face-to-face -face people actually make of jesus what is their story what is the in their time in the dock what do they actually bring to the argument andrew uh peter's fisherman brother says runs up to him one day and says, we found the Messiah. So it kicks off the start of the history of one of the most famous people who ever lived. We don't know Andrew that well. We do know Peter a lot. There's a lot that Peter says. He writes, he dictates, we think, the, Mark, the, the Gospel of Mark to Mark himself. So we know his story. We've got some letters that he's written. We've got all the stories of the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> and Peter's story starts here. So Peter is introduced to the fact that there is a Messiah and he's walking around on the earth as Peter is living and walking around on the earth. There have been 260 popes in the Vatican since the whole Vatican in Rome started. Here is the story of the popes of the Vatican where they started. Peter was the first pope. Andrew is called, Peter is called, Nathaniel is called, as is Philip, Philip is called as well. So we get the birth of the church, the birth of the disciples group, the birth of the apostles. And Jesus had a very specific plan for each of them. And it started with their calling. A calling is something where you're, you're vehemently um, communicating a message to somebody. You've got uh, something inside you want to say to them. You call out, you say the message and that person hears and they respond if they like the message. That's what the calling is. For us in the church, in the kingdom, calling is like the bottom layer of <clears throat> a Victoria sponge. Imagine a Victoria sponge where you've got two layers, two sandwiches, and you've got cream and jam in the middle. The bottom layer, it underpins everything. It supports everything. It lifts everything up. It's like the foundation. The cream and the jam without that bottom layer will be all over the place, all over the plate, all over the table. You, would, you wouldn't actually be able to contain it because the bottom layer contains what the rest of our life, what the rest of our identity, what the rest of our walk with Jesus actually is. When were you called to follow Jesus? And what is that calling? What is your calling? What is your unique jigsaw piece that you bring to the kingdom of God? that's a bit of a provocative question because you might be thinking well i haven't been called i don't can't remember a time when jesus spoke to me and told me what he wants me to do uh, and that's why i ask it really because you most definitely have you have been called everyone is called to follow jesus but not everyone hears and listens to that call so the call is something as i said before when somebody calls the message out you you respond to it or you don't respond to it that's your choice so what is your calling? Do you know what it is? If you do, it's good to keep returning to what God has said and pray about that. So if because it's the foundation of who you are and what your identity is with Jesus, the thing that lifts up everything else, it's good to be able to um, return to that and say, well, this is what God originally said to me. This was my entry point. This was the doorway that I walked through to the kingdom and said, God said, this is the shape I want you to be. 
and you go back to that and you say okay that's going to be the shape of me for all of the rest of my life and eternity that's what i'll follow so you go back to that calling and say when you wobble a little bit when you get a little bit maybe out of sync with life maybe something takes over you or something distracts you you can go back to god and say what do you say again god what do you say jesus what was my calling oh yeah it's that i can actually start start from scratch there with that it clarifies where you are at it gives you a stronger identity in jesus it tells you the purpose that you're here for the destiny why did why were you put on this earth your calling explains that jesus says this is what i want you to do this is your part of the whole thing you are the left back or the quarterback or the bus driver or the accountant or the road sweeper or the teacher or the housewife whatever the you whatever your part is to play in that then that's what god gives you to do it creates a firm foundation for god to build the rest of your life on not just today and tomorrow but the rest of this life on earth and then for eternity if you don't yet know what your calling is there's only one way to go with that only one person to ask only one person has the answer try it today and see what he says pray into that ask him and see what your calling is you'll find your own personal golden ticket <laughs>